All right, all right, it's been a while. I wanna get into some more Ben 10 hot takes. Part five. It's obvious. Everybody loves to watch Ben 10. The best Omnitrix is the one in Omniverse. It just looks so cool, and the fact that the faceplate opens up to the side is so interesting, since it's always just been the dial. Nah, Alien Force takes the cake for me personally. The Omniverse one sounds nice and feels more slick, but they couldn't even make a single toy out of it that looked good. So, yeah. Alien Force's slick, sexy design is my favorite, personally. Ben's relationship with Esther was the best, despite not being great. I really liked how consistent their relationship was, and I hated how they got rid of her for Kai, as she just liked Ben as Blitzwolfer, and Esther literally says she likes Ben in his human form the most. I totally agree. Between Julia, Elena, Eunice, Kai, and Esther, I definitely enjoy this chemistry with Esther the most. They just seemed cuter together, and Kai was really flanderized in Omniverse, to the point of being really irritating. I really like how they handled the Vilgax arc in Season 1 of Classic, and the Kyber arc in Season 1 of Omniverse. With almost every episode of the season having something to do with Kyber or Vilgax and still having their own story, unlike other arcs like the Ghost Freak arc, which had to make every episode go out of its way to be a piece of the arc without having a good story. The Vilgax arc in Season 1 is amazing, as I touched on in my Vilgax video, Video. And while I'm not the biggest Kyber fan, his introduction was one of the best aspects in my eyes. I agree, though, that the season arcs to establish a character really work well in Ben 10. We also saw this with a hybrid in Agrigore. Water Hazard is an underrated alien and could have been used way more, and had a really cool design in Omniverse. My favorite design, to be honest. Water Hazard's cool, I mean, his name is abysmal, and out of the Andromeda aliens, I can't say he's my favorite, but I enjoyed his design and his voice in Omniverse sounded much better. So, I recently started rewatching Ultimate Alien and I came up with a huge hot take. See Season 2 and 3 of Ultimate Alien feel super inconsistent. For every one masterpiece, we'll get like 6 boring episodes, and the fight scenes in the last season didn't have too much happening, like the Ultimate Way Big Battle or Ultimate Wild Mount vs. the Chameleon Alien. It's like the other seasons were rushed, and only Season 1 had time to develop an entertaining plot, and the rest had limited time to create good episodes in my opinion. I totally agree. After Absolute Power, they dished long character arcs for the most part aside from Dagon, and did mostly one-off episodes with not a lot of weight. I also agreed that the fight scenes were a lot more more rushed and bland, although the ultimate Wild Mutt fight in particular succeeds because it manages to stay emotionally engaging despite only lasting a few seconds. The ultimate way big one though, and especially the Vilgax fight, yeah, no. I think Alone Together would have been a much better Season 2 opener than the Dark Star episode we got. I totally agree. I mean, there are certain things that Season Premiere needs to touch on, which Dark Star Rising does, but generally, Alone Together may have been the best episode of the show, and it would have definitely been a fantastic Premiere episode. Hot take 1, Vilgax turning into a big squid is stupid. Yep. 2. Nearly all of Omniverse's designs are superior to the UAF versions, except for Gwen and Kevin. Video on this coming up. 3. I don't like the Omnitrix looking like a normal wristwatch. I like it being more alien and looking like it's well and truly attached to Ben. I agree, this is the one part of the original series Omnitrix I enjoy the most. Ripping it off has to feel painful, or else I'm not invested that much in a simple wash that he can remove and throw around. The weird voices for aliens in the OG were the best. The voices for Ripjaws, Cannonbolt, Forearms, Grey Matter, Accelerate, Diamond Head, and Wild Vine, and OV were disappointing. I think almost all the OG voices were amazing, not gonna lie. The UAF forearms design is actually good. Seeing as Ben is a massive Sumo Slammers fan, having one of his most used aliens look kinda like a Sumo Wrestler slash Warrior makes sense. I don't know what Sumo Slammers has to do with the alien's design. It's not like Ben customized him in his Wii console or something. But forearms as design has had a bunch of funny changes, from the weird ponytail to the mustache he gets in Omniverse. Alien X doesn't really appear enough for how complex and powerful he truly is, and honestly, after Ben essentially getting full control of him towards the end of Omniverse, it feels so off that he only has one more appearance in the entire show after that. Like, you literally have the ability to manipulate time and space, why are you using anything else? I delved deep into Alien X in my Alien X video, but all I'll say is that I think Omniverse did a fantastic job with Alien X, and the number of appearances for him, there's not much I would have changed. We see him finally manipulate time and space, we see him fly around and do some hand-to-hand -hand combat, and we see him use the master control to kick butt with no hindrances. Seems like a nice balance to me. Simple from Alien Force was a good episode. I have some mixed thoughts on this, as far as being an entertaining enough 22 minute ride with some cool aliens and an interesting premise, it does a good job. The main thing you can take away from it is that Ben doesn't always succeed, and sticking his nose in the foreign affairs of another planet's war with no knowledge won't always end with a happy ending. But obviously there are some parts to it which can be idiotic or infuriating, which is why a lot of people, me included, find it to be stale and ridiculous. Wrath is the best alien as well as the funniest alien of all the shows. Not to mention, while what I might say next might be a bit much, it would be funny if Wrath got so angry to the point that he transformed into Ultimate Wrath without actually touching the Ultimatrix, like Ben can do when transforming into aliens via Master Control. I know I've plucked like a hundred of my videos, but I literally also made a video on Wrath and why he's legendary, and you're right. If he could turn Ultimate just by being angry Hulk style, that would be pretty hilarious. Saving and surviving the acid in his ear without any deafness or scars was the biggest retcon ever. I never actually thought about this, but you're right. That would have been a great 
great opportunity to remind Ben of how he trolled Simeon to the max when they meet up after. Just everything I did with Simeon after his premiere episode doesn't sit right with me. The main problem with Ben's aliens is they all use an excessive amount of green. Absolutely. I mean, it definitely made them a lot more uniform and unique to the show, but I agree, Alien Force used green way too goddamn much. Dr. Animo was his best as the Void, mostly because he was such a monumental threat in that episode. Nah, the Void ruined Animo's playful persona that he had prior. After the Void episode, he sort of goes back to that, but I didn't enjoy the whole King of the Null voice shake they wanted to go with. My Valvin is the best of the five Andromeda aliens, partially because he was voiced by D. Bradley Baker, the same guy behind Clone and Clone Wars and Bad Batch. Well, to be fair, D. Bradley Baker was the majority of the aliens in Ultimate Alien Force, so that doesn't really mean much. I mean, legitimately, every single other Andromeda alien was voiced by Baker at one point, so yeah. Also, no, NRG is the coolest. I like Atomics mostly because of the NRG and him being subspecies theory, and I think he has a funny voice. Sure, let's go with that. His voice is kind of annoying, though. But Rot was greatly underutilized, and I personally would like to see more of him. The fart alien? I feel like if he was introduced in Ultimate Alien Force, I would have taken him a lot more seriously, and maybe he could have been one of the coolest. But the way he was handled in Omniverse felt so childish and cliche. It's a shame we didn't get a crossover between Omniverse and Transformers animated, as both were kind of similar, especially with the art style, rest in peace to Jay Wyatt. I agree, although I'm pretty sure that there were some Easter to that show in Omniverse somewhere. We should have seen more of the hybrid after Alien Force, especially Riney, he was amazing. Well, that was one of the few redeeming qualities of the If All Else Fails episode with the walking tree or whatever, but yeah, Riney is one of the great characters out of Alien Force. Hot take 1, Spitter and Buzzshock need more screen time. Hot take 2, Julie should have been with Ben instead of Kai. Both of these are objectively wrong. And that's Ben 10 Hot Takes Part 5. If you want more, be sure to leave some more hot takes in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Be sure to check out parts 1 to 4 in the description below if you want to see more. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish next time. Shalom, everybody!